How's it going guys, Linux Daily here back with another video. We're going to be taking a look at Solus Linux. I know I've been inactive for a few months here, but I do plan on making a, more videos here in the future. So, with all that being said, here is the Solus website. It's um, https colon slash slash getsoul.us and then slash home. Brings us to this site. It's, uh, just a kind of a Linux distribution here. It has a few different desktop environments. If we click learn more, it looks like it features Budgie, Gnome, Mate, and Plasma. I'll be taking a look at the Plasma desktop environment. This is the one I'm most familiar with. So if we go over here to the Downloads tab and find our Plasma one, here we are. Max size is 1.8 gigabytes. Seems like it's one of, never mind, I was going to say it's one of the larger ones, but we have a 1.9 gigabyte file here. More information, you need a blank DVD that's 2 gigs or more, or a USB drive. 10 gigs of uh, free hard disk space, 2 gigs of RAM, and a 64-bit processor, so it looks like there is no 32-bit support here. So with that being said, I'm going to go and download this one right here, save it. And then I'll get back to you when that is complete. Alright everyone, I did go ahead and boot into this live environment. That's actually the only option that it gave me was to boot straight into the live environment. So here we are. Looks like our option right here is going to be install OS. It also does look like we have a few pre-installed things within this live environment. But I'm going to look into those after the installation is complete. So I'm going to go ahead and click install. The resolution is kind of messed up so I have to drag this over so I can see the next button over there so we're gonna click English United States next I'm going to skip this part English US is correct time zone right there it's perfect click next so we have a 88 gig hard drive I'm just gonna have it automatically erase disk and do its thing and click next I'm not going to be using LVMs here and then add a host name we're going to pick that install a bootloader we're going to want that on this hard drive that is perfect so I'm going to click next username Linux daily Linux daily and a very secure password then we will click next is there any options it wants us to pick because next seems to be grayed out cancel you haven't added any users yet Oh, I don't think it likes these passwords, so I add a couple characters. There. there we go. Now our next is good. Move this back over here. Review. All right, so this all looks good. It's going to use MS DOS partition table instead of um, GPT, which is all right, I guess. It's probably because it sees eighty-eight. Um, the 88 gigs instead of a larger disk. It's going to create a pseudo user Linux daily and then set the host name to Linux daily and sell the bootloader on SDA which is all perfect. So I'm going to click install and then click OK. This is the point where it's going to write all the files to the system. So a brief overview on Solus is its package manager is EOPKG. It's not really based on anything so runs its own. It's a monolithic kernel. As, like I said earlier, has a few different desktop environments. Of course it's open source and it is a rolling release. So that's just a quick little rundown of Solus. So I'll get back to you when this is complete and give a full in-depth review of it. Okay everyone, the installation was complete. On the prompt it had a, a little option that says restart now. But I accidentally left the disk image in and it rebooted back into the live environment, so I removed all that, and we are back in Grub. 
So it looks like our only option here is Solus 41 Fortitude with the 5.4.12 kernel. So we'll boot into that. It's going to load the RAM disk and boot into our new installation. I'm going to close out of this. So we are greeted with the display manager. So I'm typing my very secure password to log into our system. I'm going to experiment to see if I could get this resolution fixed here in the settings in the virtual machine. So I'll go to resolution, see what we can do. 1920 by 1440. I'm gonna go a little go right there. It actually does not like changing the resolution. Alright. So it looks like we're just gonna have to deal with this one. It might be because I don't have VirtualBox guest editions installed. So what comes pre-installed is under graphics we get Ocular with a PDF reader. Looks like we have LibreOffice and Gwen View as the image viewer. So it looks like we're gonna have a bunch of KDE programs installed here. KDE Connect, Conversation, Thunderbird, Firefox. Looks like we're gonna get the whole LibreOffice suite, settings, software center. I'm gonna have to check that one out. Network configuration. Looks like we just got a little bare bones here. Case discard terminal, which is gonna be the console terminal. We get Dolphin Info Center. Then under utilities, we get Kate Arc, K Char Select. KCALC, Spectacle, and KWrite. So let's actually go check that info center out. So we are running Solus 4.1 with a KDE version of 5.17. This is actually quite a nice information. Kind of like the GUI version of HTOP, which I don't believe is installed with this graphical information. Open GL, we get um looks like we get X and Wayland here. It thinks it's VMware, but I'm running this under an Oracle virtual box. So let's go to console and see if HTOP here is installed. No it is not. So HTOP is not installed here. So let's actually go check out that, where was that at, in the software center here. Desktop software and theming gaming on Solus, multimedia and graphics, internet software, and office software. Let's go check out this, um, looks like we can install i3 directly from the software center. which is actually quite neat it actually installs quite a few good utilities so this is a decent software center actually gaming on Solus looks like it does have quite a few games here I wonder if you can install actual steam through here I'm not sure it might actually be in the repositories you might have to use them the terminal for that role-playing games so we have quite a good selection of software if you go in third-party you can install flash chrome a whole bunch of different software here you can even search so that is a neat little software center we get of course we get dolphin pretty self-explanatory file manager right there actually let's go ahead and try to install something from the software center multimedia and graphics let's go here audio software let's try that actually now I'm gonna go something a little more straightforward I'm gonna install try to install this one right here the resolution still seems to be a little iffy. 
running at a very low. So it looks like it is installing. So I'll get back to that one in a little bit while that's installing. I'll leave that and just minimize it here. So let's see exactly how we can get this package manager running through the terminal. If it's just EOPKG. All right, no option given. Let's look at the man page for it. So here's the manual page for EOPKG. So I'm taking a quick glance through here. Looks like it's a fairly straightforward package manager. Yeah, it is. Looks like it's fairly straightforward. Pretty neat. Being a rolling release, it's kind of like Arch Linux. It's not going to be the most stable, I wouldn't imagine, since everything gets updated on the spot. It tends to break some stuff. So that is neat. It has a pretty neat theme here on the shell through console. Security updates available. So we can also update our system through the software center. It looks like our game is installed. Updates. So it will install a bunch of updates here. Update selected. All right, I don't think we selected anything. All right, I'll put my password in anyway. All right, it looks like it is just gonna update. Actually, I don't think it is. We'll select these. I don't think it wants to select that one. All right, so we're gonna select that. It might be because it's already updating. Install. All right, updates are applying. So we update everything through there. And our racing game is installed right there. The Solus is a pretty neat Linux distribution. Software Center seems really straightforward. The EOPKG package manager seems quite nice. I would probably recommend this one for a new user, but being a rolling release, it, it could be a little, little iffy. But other than that, everything seems fairly straightforward. I, I do like the fact that you can install different desktop environments directly through the, the software center. Usually you have to go through the terminal to figure that out. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll catch you in the next one.